I'm Anahasio, and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host, Donald. Tonight's feature is the 1933 Boris Karloff film, The Ghoul. Previously thought lost, a copy was found in Czechoslovakia in 1969, although it was muddy, nearly silent, and missing some portions. The original negative was later found in the early 1980s, and this restored version, which we have tonight, was released in 2003. Before we start the movie, we have the next episode of The Great Alaskan Mystery. Previously, Jim Hudson escaped death through a cheap edit and returned to his father's mind. Meanwhile, his father and Dr. Miller tried to rekindle old romantic feelings while Brandon and Dr. House wondered if they had any romance left to save. Jim and the bosun left for a personal getaway, but the cable on their elevator snapped, sending them hurtling to their doom. And now, Episode 7 of The Great Alaskan Mystery, Crashing Timbers. Welcome back! Tonight's movie is 1933's The Ghoul, starring Boris Karloff. It's the story of Egyptologist Professor Morland, promising to rise from the grave if his corpse is robbed of the jewel... Uh, this is not the mummy. To paraphrase dinosaurs, it's not the mummy. You could be forgiven the confusion. Karloff had played Imhotep in The Mummy the year before, and this film also features him emerging from a sarcophagus. Unfortunately, Karloff bookends this film more than he features in it, but we do get a strong performance from Ernest Thessinger, who would later star alongside Karloff in The Bride of Frankenstein as Dr. Pretorius. And now, tonight's feature, The Ghoul. Tonight's film is The Ghoul, and I'd say it's interesting, but I don't want to lie to you. However, it may prove rewarding to view the film through a camp lens. Of course, you have an over-the-top performance by the allegedly openly bisexual Ernest Thessinger, who just the year before was in James Whale's excellent and queer-coded The Old Dark House. And just like that film, this movie has its own instances of, let's say, undermined heterosexuality. The central couple are cousins, so there shouldn't be any question of romance, but Betty's roommate, Miss Caney, comes along to prevent any rumors or <clears throat> activities, and it's not clear that they don't become a couple during the film. This is notable because Betty and Caney themselves read as a couple when they're first introduced, discussing what the inheritance will mean for both of them and what they'll do with it together. Soon, Agabendragora is going to re-enter the picture and leverage Caney's S&M fantasies to use her as a beard. Yes, you heard me right, overt S&M fantasies. Most of these elements kick off in the second half of the film, so that's what you have to look forward to as we return to the ghoul. That was the ghoul, everyone! If I understand the film correctly, everyone is evil and the cousins hook up. So this is how Rudy Giuliani sees the world. Here's a preview of our next film. That it could happen in America. That it could happen now. It's Inauguration Day weekend in America, so let's celebrate this moment of administrative change with the allegory of political change, the Werewolf of Washington. The president makes Werewolf Dean Stockwell his press secretary in an effort to win over the monster vote. I think your father's a cross between Abraham Lincoln and Jesus Christ. Will his puppyish loyalty leave him in a bind? Find out on the Busan Midnight Movie. Go away now! Am I really so naive that I'd respond to current events? As always, Kamsamnada, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.